Today on Art Matters with Mr. Morris, ridding. Da 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 Friends, this video is a little bit different than other videos. I'm going to be taking you through the basics of doing grid work. So without further ado, let's get to the studio table, the drawing table, the filming drawing studio, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go to the spot where the camera looks down instead of at my face. All right, my artists, today we're going to be talking about how to do gridding the right way. All right, my artists, today we're going to be going over gridding. More specifically, we're going to be doing the correct way of gridding. So first thing we're going to need is a ruler. If you don't have access to a ruler for this project, then make sure that you comment and let me know. I have a couple other materials that you might be able to get away with using in place of a ruler. There are not one, but two types of rulers that you're going to come across for the most part. One is going to be like this. And if you look, the zero is right on the edge of the ruler. The other type is like this, where the zero is indented, meaning it doesn't start on the edge, it starts a little bit further in. You need to make sure that you check your rulers to see which type you have because it will make a difference. Either one will work, but you do have to be aware if there is a gap. I'm going to purposely use the one with a gap to show you what I mean as I'm working. Now the first thing you're going to want to grid is actually your source material. Now either you have a printer or you don't have a printer. If you do have a printer, well, your source material will end up looking something like this. I've used one inch increments to measure out the entire face. So there's all these little squares, they're all one inch by one inch by one inch. I'm gonna show you how to do that on the blank sheet of paper. I pre-did it on here. If you have a image that is on the computer and digital. I'm gonna give instructions on how to put a grid on it right now. So here's my desktop and you can see I have my photograph that I took the other day. I have labeled it with a name I recognize. Now I'm gonna pick out my favorite web browser. I use Safari myself, use what you want. I'm gonna to go to the address bar and I'm gonna type in griddrawingtool.com. If you can't remember that or aren't sure how to spell it, pause the video, look up there, write it down. All right, so here's the website, and you're gonna see that there's all these different steps. Don't worry about all of that. There's a tutorial video. It's basically what I'm about to show you in-house. So we're going to do step one, load the drawing. So I go ahead and click on the button, and I have it on desktop, and right there's my file. I named it something I recognize for a reason. So now I've uploaded this image, and I'm gonna skip through step two, it's already been rotated. I'm gonna skip through cropping because I already cropped it. And I'm even gonna skip through this one. Um, it's not needed because I already did it. Then I'm gonna to go to gridding and you see it automatically put a grid right on the face. However, I can adjust this in some different ways. If I go up here, because it's got all these different settings, I don't want you to go any smaller than a 10. And if you are doing a 10, it's because you're a fifth grader or a fourth grader that's really familiar with it. My third graders don't go with a 10. My third graders, I want you to go with probably the 6 or the 8. The smaller my grid, the more detail and the more accuracy I can do with my grid drawing. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create it, hit the OK. It downloads to my download folder. If you aren't sure how to get to your downloads folder, go up to the magnifying lens and type in downloads. You can also go up into uh, go, you can go into your applications and find it that way. All right, so either you have your grid on the computer or you have your grid here. At this point, you need to make a decision. You need to say, how large are these squares going to be on my actual artwork? And here's why this is important. On this, I have it as a one inch by one inch grid. And if I wanted to make this person's face larger, I would want to, on my sheet of paper, make a larger than one inch by one inch grid. If I wanted to make his face smaller, which for this project I wouldn't recommend, then I would want to take, this is one inch by one inch, but I'm going on here, I'm going to make it half an inch by half an inch, or however smaller it's going to be. I can blow things up or shrink things down by doing it this way. 
In this particular case, if you look, I have one, two, three, four, five, six squares. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got six by eight squares. I'm going to write that down on my sheet of paper just so I remember. Your digital image won't have numbers on it, but if you can find a way to put numbers on it, it might make your life easier, but you don't have to do it. Again, remember, the smaller your grid, the more detail and the more accurate your final drawing will be. But the smaller your grid, the harder it will be to do the gridding part. I'm going to keep this simple. Again, if you wanted to make yours more complex, you are more than welcome to. Um, it's the same idea. I'm just going to be using one inch increments on this sheet of paper. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom of my paper and I'm going to line up the where the zero is with the edge of the paper. Now remember how this ruler has an indent. You'll see my indent is hanging over the edge. That's purposeful. If I was using a ruler without an indent, like this one, it would go right up to the edge. So it's flush here versus here, it's hanging over. The key part is I want to make sure that wherever the zero is or wherever the marks start on your ruler, it's right on the edge. Before you start, make sure you're on the one inch increments. I'm going to hold my paper down with some fingers. I'm going to hold my ruler down with some fingers and I'm going to make a little mark at the start of each one of the main numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth until I have however many squares I'm gonna need for this side. Okay, so if you remember, my final image is going to be six by eight inches. And right here, I've got my eight. So now I need to go six this way. And well, I have a little problem that you may not. You see, the piece of paper that I picked out is huge. It is huge, but you know what? I'm gonna purposely use this big sheet of paper in case you have a similar problem to what I'm about to show you. Watch, watch carefully. I cannot stress to you how important this part is. I am not turning my paper. I'm gonna slide my paper towards me. I did not turn my paper. I did not flip my ruler, and now I'm gonna put this All right, so I have my eight marked. So now I am going to turn my paper and voila. Now again, remember my paper, my grid only needs to be eight by six. So I don't have to grid all the way up. I'm going to just to show you how to do it though. I'm going to put this right on the edge. And this particular piece of paper I have is 12 inches. So that means I'm gonna have 12 squares. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and lined up. I'm going to make sure my indent is not affecting anything, and here we go. All right, now again, I am not, I am not turning my paper. I'm sliding my ruler up. Let's say that my paper hadn't been exactly to the inch, 12 inches wide. Let's say it was 12 and a half inches wide. If I had started this ruler down at the bottom of the page, and I measured 12 squares and then I had that little bit of a half inch square not even square but at the half inch half a square at the end and then I took my paper and I turned it and did this again here's the problem here I'd have a full grid but this was the half a grid so it's gonna make it so my whole grid is all cattywampus it's gonna make it so everything's at an angle that's why we never turn the paper. Take your ruler, make your marks, move your ruler up. Don't turn the paper. All right, now that I have all of my marks on here, I need to start making my lines. This part can take some time, but as long as you're paying attention, this will go nice and smooth. Should not be a problem at all. Barely an inconvenience. I am right-handed. For that reason, I'm going to start from the left side. I'm going to move my way over. If I was left-handed, I will want to start from this side, the right side, and move over. This will make it so you don't smear any pencil lines. I'm gonna make sure that I'm lined up so the ruler is touching that line. Sometimes I'll even take the tip of my pencil, I'll rest it on that line, pull the ruler up. That's where I want it to be. Now I'm gonna hold this side down. I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna see, is it on the line also? I'm not quite. 
Before I make the line, I'm gonna say, is it right on my two markings? Does my ruler look straight in comparison with the rest of the page? If it doesn't, double check things. But if it does look straight, it's on the line, I'm gonna now draw a line towards me. This line should not be dark. This line should not be dark. I'll say it one more time, this line should not be dark. Now I'm gonna move my ruler over to the next marks. So again, I'm gonna make sure it's right on there. Make sure it's right on there, excellent and pull the line towards me. Always pull towards you, don't pull, don't push away from you. Pull towards, not away, towards. Your line should be nice and light. All right, here I'm going to go through, I'm gonna do the rest of the lines. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier because the ruler has to go the whole length of the paper, line up my lines, and let's get started. Yes, grid drawing is one of the few times where I'm gonna tell you, use your eraser. And only so that you can make sure your grid is as accurate as you can make it. The more accurate your gridding is, the more accurate and realistic your drawing will be. I have the exact number of squares here are going to be the same number of squares here. The exact size of these squares will be the exact size of the squares here. I'm copying the drawing exactly. Again, if you're one of my students that's really familiar with this, maybe one of my fifth graders or something, and you had wanted to shrink or expand your image, this would not be a one-to-one -one ratio because you would be taking the same number of squares but making the squares larger on this or smaller on this. If you're not ready for that, my third graders, for instance, keep this very, very simple. One-to-one. -one. one inch squares, one inch squares. In this case, I have eight by six, so here I wanna make sure I'm only using eight by six. And I have this good piece of scrap paper. And what I'm liking about the scrap paper is it's a little bit thicker. It's got a little bit of rigidity to it. All right, so I have my scrap piece of paper. I want to put a one inch by one inch grid. You may be thinking, Mr. Morris, does how accurate does this need to be? This does not have to be super accurate. I'm just going to kind of eyeball, kind of eyeball in. I want to make sure that it is at least as large, if not just a little bit larger than what my grid is here, but more importantly, what my grid is on my source image. Now that I've got this, I'm gonna take my paper, I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna take out these scissors, watch out where your fingers are. So now I have this piece of paper and it has a square in the center. This is going to be important because it's gonna help you to make sure that you're really paying attention not to what you're drawing, but to the specific area you are drawing. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna start up here if I'm right-handed. I'm gonna start up here if I'm left-handed. And I'm gonna just work my way square by square and then go down the next row. Work my way square by square and go down the next row. And I'm just gonna keep on doing that. Almost like an inkjet printer. You know, it's going through and it's printing beep, 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 one row at a time. To keep myself accurate, I'm gonna take this sheet of paper and I'm gonna put it over that grid. I wanna only be drawing and focusing on one square at a time. I'm gonna look for that eyebrow and I'm gonna see that eyebrow. It starts a little bit higher than halfway. I see that the eyelid kind of pokes up just a little bit and it goes almost all the way over. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. All right, the base of the eyebrow, it kind of comes over. Now, I don't really want to use too many lines, folks. I'm going to say that again. I really don't want to use too many lines. And the lines I am using, I want to keep nice and light. The reason why is because I'm really not worried about drawing this in with lines. I'm worried about drawing it in with shading. Technique of shading, dealing with value. So I'm kind of copying the general shapes that I see in that box. And again, I cut my square a little bit larger than I needed. That also helps because it kind of shows me where the next lines will line up. I'm not do doing those right now. I'm only worrying about this one box. Now I'm going to look at this. And I'm going to say, what's my darkest value? Oh, that's easy. It's going to be the hair right through here. If you're doing this on the computer screen, it's the same idea. You might even, again, 
ask for a parent's permission before you do this, you can probably tape this up or clip this up to the monitor and just put this right over top of your individual grid on the monitor. You can also zoom in so that you only see one grid at a time. I'm actually going a little bit lighter than I need to right now. That's just until I kind of get a feel for this. Now I see the bottom of the eyelid is a little bit darker. And now I'm going to say, is this completely white? No. Look at this. This is completely white, the paper. Look how much darker that is. So I want to make sure that I'm trying to match that value. I'm going to take this. I'm actually going to fold it and compare the two. Compare these two. I try to get the exact same value. Little circles. I'm saturating but I'm not pressing down super hard. I'm pressing down lightly. Now you can see it's starting to look like that square. When I go to the next square, I wanna make sure I'm paying attention to what was happening in this square. So let's say I did this square second. I would wanna make sure that this line continued to carry down cor correctly. I would wanna make sure that this value I carried on here if it carries on in the photograph. Third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, I understand what I'm showing you is a pretty tough lesson to do but take your time with it. You've got the time, take the time. I want you to go real slow with this. Make sure that your grid is done correctly. Make sure that your image is gridded correctly before you start drawing in. When you do start drawing in, again, remember, do rows. You're not gonna have just this class for doing this. You're gonna have next class for doing this, and I'm gonna give some of you that class after that. So you've got a couple days to work on this. If you wanna work on it on your downtime, Go right ahead, but you don't have to. Just keep on practicing while we have our normal classes. I'm proud of what you are doing. Until next time, all of my friends, please remember, be kind to yourself and keep on creating. Have a great day. I'm Mr. Morris. Bye.